I recently had the privilege, privilege, pleasure, of visiting Barbados. And I'm just sat back in beautiful England and I'm looking through the footage and I thought I have to share this with you. So first video is some of my footage from visiting the St Nicholas Abbey distillery in the northern part of the island. It's a remarkable place, really tranquil and respectful of nature and history. I love it there and I love the rum they produce as well. So sit back, relax and enjoy a journey through St Nicholas Abbey distillery. Hello, it is early morning and we are up here at Cherry Tree Hill. It is remarkably different up here to the rest of the island that we've been to. It is fresh, it is breezy, and the temperature feels, feels less. Maybe it's the humidity, I don't know. Good afternoon, welcome to St. Nicholas Abbey. My name is Virginia. Hi, Virginia. Hello. Hi. Now first, it's called an abbey, never been an abbey. It's still a work in sugar plantation. Completed by 1658, the house is over 350 years. This is the most beautiful place I've ever been to. It is fresh, there's a beautiful breeze. We've just had a tortoise walk past us, and there's these incredibly ancient trees. Just for you all, I actually had this cleaned up a little bit. It looked a lot worse <laughs> because <laughs> you can see the flywheel as it that's the volcanic <laughs> dust. That's the volcanic dust from the volcano. Wow. Because of course it just went all through here. Wow. Yeah. So this is really this is really a heart of our operation. And when I was looking at St. Nicholas Abbey, I opened this door. And when I saw this mill sitting here, I said, well, this is sent from God. And I, right away, it started clicking what we could do with it. In those days, with the tonnage at about 25, 30 tons an acre, would have been producing 67,000 tons of cane. Today, we crush 300. <laughs> so it just shows you the reduction. They bring the cane in one ton at a time, and we help take it off using that hoist. And then by hand, it's fed through this door, into the chute, in through the rollers, and then bogas comes out here. The bogas is then taken to dry. Once it's dried, it will be used as fuel to fuel the boiler to, to create the steam to run the generator, to, mm. to run the, the mill. And the juice goes down into this tray through a, a filter and then into a tank, and then the pump on this machine pumps it to the filters down there. Wow. Uh, we are a, a, a sort of producer, as you will know, the new, and we still condition, continue the tradition. We have had experiences when we first started making rum from juice and it was not good because the bacterial action in the fermentation is really explosive. I mean, it's seriously explosive. One morning we would come in and the fermenters are in that building there and we found the syrup trailing going down the road. So what the, this um, evaporator does at 60 to 70 degrees, more than 60 degrees, it pasteurizes the syrup. So the juice comes from the mill into filters, we suck it up into the, using the vacuum, we dehydrate it about one third. So we're taking it from about 22% um, percent sugar to about 73% percent sugar. We then feed it into this big tank and then that's where we store our sugars, fermentable sugars for the rest of the year. So it's a, it's a way of banking your sugars. And we're ready now to distill we then reconstitute it by putting the syrup into that large tank at the bottom, adding water to it, and then pumping that to our fermenters. Hello! Hello! We believe that fermentation is, is the key to making good rum. I'm gonna turn, turn you over to Eddie, who will just describe a little bit of what he does. So we have the fermentation, these are the fermenters. This is the sugarcane juice. It comes here by pipes at the top. We have mixed the yeast. The yeast is propagated the day before. Within about five to six days, we will have that fermentation, converting these sugars in this liquid into alcohol compounds. Once that has been finished, we then transfer it here to the kettle where it's a series of heating, cooling, and condensing. You have the heating here. You have the fractionating column where it is actually have a pre-condenser where it's cooled and returned to the mixture. 
In that way, you have the separation of the compounds. You have the heads, hearts, and tails. The traditional like distillery, like Four Squares and Mount Gay, will have a pot still where they would have pots mm. and, and create pot still. And then they would have an industrial column creating ethanol and then they would blend and, and, and so on. But what Eddie is actually doing is a hybrid. He has the pot and he has the rectifying column and he is actually doing it all one time. You can take a note of this guy that he still numbers. Yeah. So Larry's this one is number 85 and our column still I think is number 84. Is it really? Yeah. Oh really? Well that would make sense because yeah, you were this was the next still that would brought him to the island. Yeah, this is for the island, the numbers for the yeah, still on the still island. Still for eternity. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, so they're not existing anymore, but they were licensed at one point in time. Wow. So there yeah, there have been eighty five licensed stills <laughs> once they since they had started licensing. It's incredible. Hundreds more before when they didn't have a licensing system. Do you name the stills as well or do they just yeah, reference this, them? This one is called after uh, Anna. Anna. Annabelle. Annabelle. Beautiful Anna. Um, we do everything very funky, you know, small, <laughs> small world. Wow. Yeah. See this here? I was about to drill this out here and realized just before I got to it that if I did that, I mean, all the rum is going to shoot out. So I changed and started with a tiny top. It's more humid, I think, it is. Yeah, like humid. Mm. Because you see, as you can see, the walls are uh, not waterproof, and so all the water is coming down. You know, the same amount that Malgay and, um, and uh, Four Squares spills in a month that we produce in a year. <laughs> this is part of our stage and stock. Our focus is for keeping the barrels as best as we can in as great shape as we can to continue reusing them and reusing them. The delicacy of our rum is kind of, for the long run, is to try a slow maturation and trying to keep a very delicate theme going from sugar right through. That theme from syrup to white rum to 10 year old. There's just that underlying consistency. So what we will do, if we have a five year old rum, we will then marry all those barrels together. So in the, in the marrying process, what it does is it allows it to go right in the back, pull the barrels out, um, marry them, and then we check to see they're all okay. And we check the hoops because we have a lot of salt and we have to be careful of rusting. Mm. And we do find occasionally one that's completely gone, you know? Oh, here we go. Two more coming. In 2006, our family took a decision, some of us not fully on board, uh, with purchasing St. Nicholas Abbey. Because as an architect in the early 70s, I saw that Marriott had effectively promised the Barbadians that Samor's Castle, which was this iconic castle with a huge history behind it of buccaneering and piracy and so on, um, they promised the Barbadian people that they would protect Samor's Castle. So as a young architect, I realized within a five year period that they really had no intention of protecting Samor's Castle. It really was a, a gem. So in 2006, I realized that St. Nicholas Abbey as it came up for sale, would eventually become the same sort of, that, that's where it would end up. And it was that trigger point that really made us look at buying it to, to preserve it and sustain it. But we then had a business plan of sustaining it based on products around sugar, of course, primarily rum. So that just gives you how an idea of how we got into rum. The whole idea is we needed to find a sustainable product that would carry the whole heritage attraction forward even if we were not here and as a result of that we we try and do everything in a very traditional way and it is um it is our ethos that we do things as much in quality and tradition and by hand and try to maintain a production capacity that will retain that um, that fundamental idea uh, and we take it to heart that's why we always try to make sure everything is done authentically and with quality and tradition. But you know, you can't kill the bad. You can't get rid of them. Oh, there it is. Yeah. No. It's not good. It's not good. It's If you enjoyed this video, then I'd kindly ask you to subscribe and look out for my upcoming videos where I'm going to take you around Mount Gay Distillery and the Foursquare Distillery as well. Thanks for watching.